Okay, so thanks for that, Jake. I want to watch you walk up and down, please, at the end of the couch, okay. to and fro. And whilst he's doing that, I'm looking to see if he's got a stiff-legged gait, looking for spasticity. I'm looking to see what his posture is like, to see whether he's got arm swing, to see whether he's stooped or not. I'm looking and listening to see whether he's got a foot slapping gait. Having done that, I'm now going to watch him in the other plane. I'm going to see if he's got a broad-based ataxia. And just stop there, please. And a more exacting test of coordination of gait is to get him to walk five steps like this, heel to toe. Can you do that for me, please, Jake? OK, that's fine. Thanks very much. And now we're going to do Romberg's test. So I want you to stand with your feet together. OK. Eyes open to start with. Are you OK like that? Yeah, fine, yeah. OK. And now eyes closed. And I'm standing here to catch him, just in case this is a positive Romberg's test, and he sways excessively, which he isn't doing. OK, so that's the end of that part of the examination. So I'd like you to strip off to your underclothes, please, okay. and climb on the couch. OK. okay? The neurological examination of the limbs is done separately, first the arms and then the legs. And whilst you're examining the arms, remember to examine the scapulae, which anatomically are part of the arms. And also note that these arms and legs need to be bare. So I'm now going to stand by the couch and inspect his arms and legs. Can you just uh, uncurl your hands and rest your hands down like that? Thank you. With an inpatient, I note items around the bed, such as walking aids, or calipers. I also note his resting posture, any asymmetry, any added movements, or any obvious wasting with or without fasciculation. Next I'm going to inspect his arms more closely. And now can you sit forwards please, Jake, so I can look at your scapulae. OK, that's fine. Will you rest back again, please? As with all parts of this examination, I compare the two sides. I'm looking at muscle bulk, in case there's any wasting or fasciculation, any asymmetry and abnormality, perhaps, of resting posture or any abnormal involuntary movements. Next, I want you to put your hands out like that, please, with your eyes closed. I'm looking to see if there's any pronator drift, on one side, which would suggest a subtle pyramidal deficit on that side. I can't see any evidence of that. OK, thanks. You can put your hands down. Next, I'm going to examine tone in his arms. So I want you to let your arms go loose and floppy, please, Jake. I'm going to begin with the elbow, flexion and extension, then supination and pronation of the wrist, flexion and extension of the wrist. And then I'm comparing the two sides, left elbow, supination, pronation again, and flexion, extension of the wrist. OK, thank you. I'm looking for an increase or decrease in tone. In pyramidal deficits, clasp knife rigidity and or clonus may be found. In extra pyramidal deficits, I'll find cogwheeling or lead pipe rigidity. And in a lower motor neuron lesion, I would expect the tone to be decreased. Next, I'm going to assess power, again comparing left with right, beginning proximally, working distally. It's important to secure the joint so that you only test power around one joint at any time. Where possible, compare your power with the patient. When testing elbow flexion, for example, oppose his biceps with yours. I'm looking to see if there is any weakness, and if there is, what is the pattern of that weakness? Next, Jake, I'm going to test the strength in your arms. I want you to put your elbows up like this and push up against me, then push down on my hands. I want you to pull your elbow towards you, push me away, pull towards you, push me away. Tight fist, don't let me push it down. Tight fist. Straight fingers, don't let me push them down. Straight fingers. I want you to push your fingers apart, stop me pushing them together. Push your fingers apart, stop me pushing them together. And now I want you to push your thumb against my thumb. Push your thumb against my thumb. Make me one of those. And stop me pulling your finger and thumb apart. OK, thank you. 
Coordination in the arms is tested using the finger-nose test and with rapid alternating supination and pronation movements. In the finger-nose test, I'm particularly looking for past pointing, i.e. action tremor or kinetic tremor. Next, I'm going to test coordination. Jake, I want you to touch my finger and then touch your nose, first with your right hand, back and forth, to and fro. It's important to make sure that he's stretching his arm out and also important to make sure that he's supinating and pronating appropriately whilst he's doing this test. And now the left hand, please. Same again. Okay, that's fine, thank you. And now I want you to do this, patting the back of your hand, front, back, front, back, like that quick as you can, and then the other way round. So any corruption of this movement would be dysdiadocokinesia, but he hasn't got it. Next I'm going to do the reflexes. Note how I hold the tendon hammer at the end so I can use it like a passive pendulum rather than giving him a firm blow with the hammer. So I need his arms to be relaxed. I'm going to do the supinators first, comparing the two sides. Now I'm going to do the biceps jerk. And the triceps. I'm going to finish off with the finger jerk on either side. If you have difficulty eliciting any of the reflexes, use reinforcement. Get your patient to clench their teeth and try again immediately. I routinely test four modalities, pinprick, light touch, proprioception and vibration sense. For pinprick and light touch, I validate the sensation at the patient's sternum and then check for sensation either in each dermatome individually or distally depending on the pattern I'm expecting. I routinely leave out deep pain and temperature sensation, which are only necessary in specific cases. So to test pinprick perception, take a neurotip and try it out on your subject, giving him two or three pricks in a particular position to make sure that he can feel that it's sharp before moving on to the dermatomal examination. So. Jake, I want you to tell me if this is sharp or blunt. Sharp. OK. So we're now going to examine his dermatomes, beginning with C4. Sharp or blunt? Sharp. And there? Sharp. C5? Sharp. C5? Sharp. C6? Sharp. C6? Sharp. C7? Sharp. C7? Sharp. C8? Sharp. C8? Sharp. T1? Sharp. T1? Sharp. T2? Sharp. T2. Sharp. And seeing as that was OK, I will now just make sure that distal sensation is also OK, beginning with a median nerve innervated finger, sharp or blunt. Sharp. And an ulnar nerve finger. Sharp. Ulnar nerve. Sharp. Median nerve. Sharp. And well, that's fine. Thank you. Examination of light touch follows the same pattern as the examination of pinprick. It's done with a cotton wool ball and Take care to make sure it's a touch and not a stroke. So, Jake, can you feel the light touch there? Yeah. OK, thanks. So I'll now examine his dermatomes again. C4. Yep. yep. C5. Yep. Yep. C6. Yep. Yep. C7. Yep. C7. Yep. C8. Yep. C8. Yep. T1. Yep. T1. Yep. And T2. And then distally, the median nerve innervated finger, yep. ulnar finger, yep. ulnar, yep. and median. Yep. OK, thank you. Next, I'm going to test proprioception or joint position sense. So, Jake, I'm going to get a hold of your third finger. I want to get those out of the way. I'm going to move the end of your finger up or down. And you're going to close your eyes and tell me whether you can feel it moving up or down. Okay. Notice how I'm splinting his finger, so it's just the distal phalanx that I'm moving. OK, you ready? Yep. Now? Up. Now? Up. Now? Down. Now? Down. Now? Down. Now? Down. And that's OK on that side, so I'm going to do the other side. Now? Down. 
now down now down now up now up now down now down now up and that's fine the patient should be able to perceive the smallest movement you can make so if he can feel his distal phalanx going up and down then you can stop there if he can't you go to a more proximal joint so you might need to flex and extend his whole finger or his wrist or even his elbow before you get to a joint where he can perceive the movement. And don't forget to compare the left side with the right side. Finally, I'm going to examine vibration sense. I'm going to use a 128 hertz tuning fork and I'm going to validate the feeling of vibration on his sternum first. So, Jake, tell me if you can feel that vibrating. Yep. Okay. And then on his fingertip. Yep. Okay, then on the other side. Yep. Okay, now close your eyes. Tell me when it stops. Now. And if he couldn't have felt it on his fingertips, I would have then tested vibration sense more proximally on bony prominences until I got to a point at which he could feel the vibration. Next, Jake, I'd like to examine your legs. And I'll be looking at muscle bulk. I'm looking for any wasting or fasciculation. I'm looking for any abnormality of posture, any asymmetry, and any abnormal involuntary movements. Next, I'm going to examine tone. So, Jake, let your legs go loose and floppy. First, I'm going to test the tone at the hip, comparing one side with the other. Then at the knee. Then at the ankle. Okay, thanks. That's fine. Clonus is a sign of increased tone. It is a rapid, sustained jerking and may be found on forced stretching of the quadriceps or dorsiflexion of the ankle. Now I'm going to test for clonus. And Jake, this is going to involve forced stretching of your quadriceps and your calf muscles. Okay. Might hurt a bit. Okay, so quads first. And then the calf muscle. Bend your knee. Let it go as loose as you can. So that's a very rapid movement, the fastest movement I can make. And that's fine. Thank you. Next, I'm going to examine power. As before, I'm going to be comparing the two sides. And where I can, I'm going to be splinting the joint so that I'm testing the power around one joint at a time. So, Jake, I want you to lift your right leg up in the air, hold it straight, and stop me pushing it down. So that's hip flexion. Same on the other side. Hip extension, push down into my hand. Stop me lifting your leg. Thank you. Push down. Bend your knee. Pull your heel towards your bottom. So knee flexion. Push out straight. Knee extension. Same on the other side. Pull towards you. <clears throat> push me away. Pull your foot up towards you. Stop me pushing it down. Pull up. And now push down. Push down. OK, that's fine. Thank you. Next, I'm going to test coordination in the legs using the heel-shin test. So, Jake, I want you to lift your right leg up in the air, please, and hold it steady. Put your heel on your knee on the other side and hold it steady. And then run your heel down your shin. OK, that's fine, thanks. Now, the other way around, lift your left heel in the air, hold it steady. Put your heel on your knee, hold it steady. And run your heel down your shin. OK, fine. Next, I'm going to do the reflexes in his legs. I'm going to hold the tendon hammer at the end so I can make a pendulum action when I'm eliciting the reflexes. I want you to bend your knees up please, Jake. Bend them up to the same extent. And I'm going to hit his quadriceps tendon on either side and there's the knee jerk. Flop your knee down towards me. to do. This is to do his ankle jerk. Let your leg go loose. There's an ankle jerk on one side. Same on the other side.
And now I'm going to do his plantar responses. I'm going to use the blunt end of the neuro tip, but this is going to hurt a bit, Jake. I'm going to scratch the sole of your foot, and I'm going to look for the first movement of the great toe. So I begin the scratch distally and bring it proximally. There's the movement of his great toe. I don't need to go any further with that one. And on this side, again, his toes are flexing, so that's normal. With the plantar reflex, the toes should plantar flex and adduct. If they extend and abduct, this indicates an upper motor neuron lesion, a positive Babinski reflex. I routinely test four modalities, pinprick, light touch, proprioception and vibration sense. For pinprick and light touch, I validate the sensation at the patient's sternum and then check for sensation either in each dermatome individually or distally, depending on the pattern I'm expecting. And now I'm going to test pinprick in the legs. I'm going to use a neurotip and I'm going to validate the sensation against his sternum. So, Jake, can you feel the sharpness of the neurotip? Yep. Okay. Now I'm going to test his legs in a dermatomal pattern, beginning with L1. Sharp or blunt? Sharp. Sharp or blunt? Sharp. Okay. L2. Sharp. Sharp. L3. Sharp. Sharp. L4. Sharp. Sharp. L5. Sharp. Sharp. And S1. Sharp. Sharp. And if necessary, I would test also for pinprick impairment distally in case I thought he'd got a peripheral neuropathy beginning with his toe tips and coming more proximally. Sharp or blunt there? Sharp. Sharp or blunt? Sharp. Sharp or blunt? Sharp. Sharp or blunt? Sharp. And I don't need to test more proximally because he can feel it sharp distally. And now I'm going to test light touch in the legs. I'm going to use cotton wool and I'm going to validate the sensation on his sternum. So, Jake, can you feel the touch? Yep. Okay. Now I'm going to test the sensation in his legs following a dermatomal pattern beginning with L1. Can you feel the touch? Yep. yep. Now L2. Yep. L3. Yep. Yep. L4. Yep. Yep. L5. Yep. Yep. And S1. Yep. Yep. And if necessary, alternatively, I could test sensation distally, working proximally, if I thought he had a peripheral neuropathy. So I'll begin on his big toe. Can you feel that? Yep. Little toe? Yep. Big toe? Yep. Little toe. Yeah. And seeing as he can feel it distally, I don't need to work any more proximally with a light touch because that's normal. I'm now going to test proprioception or joint position sense in the toes. So, Jake, I'm going to get a hold of your big toe here and I'm going to move it up or down. Okay. I want you to close your eyes and now tell me which way I'm moving it. Now? Down. Now? Down. Now? Down. Now? Down. Now? Up. Now? Down. Now? Up. I'm going to test the other side. Now. Up. Now. Up. Now. Up. Now. Down. Now. Down. Now. Down. Now. Down. Now. Up. Okay. Well, that's fine. Thank you. If the patient can feel the smallest movement I can make of the big toe, I don't need to test any further. But if he can't manage small movements of the great toe, then I make big movements. If he can't feel those, then I would go up to the ankle and dorsiflex or plantar flex the ankle. And then if necessary, if he couldn't even feel movements at the ankle, I would do something similar at the knee with flexion and extension. And now I'm going to test vibration sense. I'm going to use a 128 hertz tuning fork and I'm going to validate the sensation on his sternum. So, Jake, can you feel that vibrating? Yep. Okay. And now I'm going to test the sensation distally on his big toes. Yep. Feel that vibrating? Can you feel it there? Yep. I want you to close your eyes now and tell me when it stops. No. And that's fine. And that's normal. If he couldn't feel the vibration distally, then I would work more proximally on the bony prominences until I found a point at which he could perceive the vibration.
This completes the full neurological examination of the arms and legs, but don't forget to examine the cranial nerves and higher mental function. And if you suspect somebody's got a spinal cord lesion, it may be necessary not only to examine sensation in the arms and legs, but also on the abdomen and chest, looking for a sensory level. And sometimes it's necessary to perform a rectal examination to examine anal tone, and also to test perianal sensation with pinprick.